Welcome to the Brokers Open Podcast. Hey guys, this episode is brought to you by our friends at Palm Media. Palm Media is a boutique digital marketing company built for realtors by realtors. They help agents and teams dominate a target market with specific tailored strategies. Everything from video, chatbots, landing pages, Facebook ads, database management, and coaching. And oh my gosh, it is way more affordable and simple than you could ever imagine. Call now for 100% free strategy session, whether you have a budget or not. Dr. Ben, my good friend, will make sure that you are heading in the right direction, building your presence online, or flat out crushing your competition. Before you spend a dime on marketing, door knocking, or sending out postcards, call Palm Media, 813-765-7706, 813-765-7706, or click the link in the description below. Manifest your paradise. And we're back <laughs> on another fabulous Friday, right? You know, I like Fridays regardless, just because usually it's been a hell of a week. Yeah. Um, but I love them every time. I know. Now, I, you know, I was gonna, I was gonna say, I mean, as if Friday needed any help to be a kick-ass day. <laughs> I know. And then along comes Brokers Open podcast, and the next thing you know, it's even more badass than it was before. Here's the interesting thing about like podcasting and and this whole journey that we've been on. I get so much energy and inspiration yep. and creativity and like positivity out of doing this. Absolutely. That it's worth every penny just personally. Yep. You know what I mean? Right. So that's why I like it. So you got me on you got me on, on atomic uh, atomic habits, right? Yeah. So I'm about three quarters of the way through that. And so so what you just said, just you know, of course, the the cool thing is so much of what we're talking about and these people that we're dealing with trigger so many conversations. And I love that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the energy level, you just talked about the energy level peaking up. So I can, you know, I can meet somebody. I'm like, oh, man, they would be fantastic to be on the podcast. And all of a sudden, energy-wise, I'm in a different place because it triggers that cue, like, from a time, yeah. right? So that all of a sudden, I'm, I'm thinking of the conversations we could have. And, hey, they succeeded at this, and they did really well at that. That'd be great to talk about. And how many people would that help if we put that on display? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's so many things we get out of it. It's just Friday is the culmination of that. Yeah. Friday is the day that we're like, holy crap, that's... You know, here, here it is. Here's the day. Let's it's time to grow and go and all of that. I, I love it. If it wasn't Friday morning, maybe we'd think about like a cocktail hour podcast. Maybe we should consider that. Wait a minute. You're, you're not drinking right now? <laughs> well, so I have a disguise cup. <laughs> so do you. Oh, yeah. This is uh, coffee, everyone. <laughs> Um, maybe we should maybe we should uh, twist some of our days to make it like a 4.30 or 5 o'clock podcast on a Friday. Justin, as fun as that sounds. I think it's a bad idea. Yeah, <laughs> the things that might come out of that. Would oh be... yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm no good once I'm a little crowned in. <laughs> yeah, I've been to Vegas with you. Yeah, that's right. yeah. See, that's how bad it is. I even forgot you were there. <laughs> we were there the whole time. And I forgot you were there. It's like uh, we recorded hey. a podcast there. We, we, uh, yeah, yeah, that too. That's which is a great podcast. Everyone should watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go back and watch it so I can remember what happened. The audio is not so good in it. All right, what are we yep. talking about today? So, yeah, we got we got some good stuff on the plate. Yep. Um, talk to me. Yeah. So we had a so so you and I were were having a discussion about you know how do we how do we help and you know how do we get a lot of people involved in making sure that they're contributing right. So we sent a survey out. You know we know a bunch of real estate agents. We've been doing this a while. So we sent kind of a survey out, and, and we knew if we sent a survey with you know ninety six questions, what's everybody going to do? Yeah, they're I don't have be time like, for that. Eh, right? Trash. So we sent a survey out, two questions, and the two questions were, what do you wish you knew? when you got in the business that you know now, and what is the biggest thing that has positively impacted your business? What are those two things that, that uh, you know, how do you answer that question now compared to how you maybe even thought you would have answered it in the beginning? And so, you know, we sent it out to a bunch of people. Really interesting answers. And we got a lot of them. Yeah. I, I, you know, I was, I was, you know, very grateful and surprised at how many responses back we got. Mm -hmm. We got them back from people that were brand spanking new in the business that was like, you know, I don't know anything, but here's what I think I know. Yep. All the way to people that were one person was 40 years in the business and said, here's what, you know, here's what I wish I knew then that I know that yeah. I know now. Yeah. And the responses. So there was some, there was some really cool things, right? But there was also like five main things <clears throat> that came up 
over and over and over. And it came up being said a different way, right? We knew from the responses that these would be important, and we've talked about a lot of them already. Yeah. But this kind of uh, this kind of just put it all into 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 one place, right? Yep. So so we got the responses back. We took a look through those and everything. You and I were both like, oh yeah, time to do it. So yep. we decided we'd come out here this morning and and talk a little bit about this and go through it and everything. So so you know the the biggest things that uh, that we got back. Were, were people that were, were passionate about helping. Mm-hmm. All of the answers were peppered with people that like helping other people. Right. Everything that they said was, you know, if I did this, I could help more people. And if, I, if I'd have known this, I would have been able to help sooner and all that. So that part we absolutely positively loved. Yeah. And it was across all, it was, a, it was across all uh, you know, real estate companies and all that kind of stuff. It wasn't like it was just one real estate company. Hey, this is how this company does this. Yeah. That's and, a big deal. And that's a big testament to... Um, I would guess, I, I want to say real estate as a whole, mm-hmm. um, because it's easy to see the dark side of things. And before we hopped on the podcast, we were talking about yeah. uh, different realtors that, you know, maybe part time or, or just get their license to, you know, do whatever. But um, well, you, you said a great thing about new people getting in the business. Well, let's talk about that for just a second. You made a you made a really good point. You know, you used to, and, and I'm still, I'm still crusty about this, right? Yeah. I'd love to be where you are with with this because you've got a great attitude about it. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't like it that a ton of people get in the business and they mess things up and they make us all look bad. Yeah, because they're just trying to to do one transaction or or just sell their their own house and they didn't really get trained for it and it blows things up. That that still bothers me. Yeah, you've, you've got a great perspective on it. Yeah. So I when I first got into the business, I was extremely hell bent, kind of coming from the finance industry. And looking at real estate from the outside in going, you know, you can you can barely have a pulse and get a real estate license mm-hmm. and then the next day go and uh, represent somebody mm-hmm. on their largest transaction. That is a scary thought. Yep. And for the longest time, and, and the, there are times that come back to me where I, there's a little bit of bitterness there. Right. But for, I would say, three years, I was um, hell-bent on um, the idea of kind of half-assed realtors and that that's the bad rap that the media kind of portrays realtors in and, and, and learned, i realized we learned a lot of it yeah oh my it's god it's not like it's been unearned some of it yeah I, I totally agree and i think we can get into that but barriers yeah. of entry need to be higher yeah but um the thing for me was a like a mental switch in thinking about the way that i think about my industry because if i'm going to be working in this industry and if i'm going to succeed in this industry to have this negative connotation about my own industry is a problem. Right. And I realized that, I internalized it, and I remember talking to colleagues of mine back in the day, and uh, the big transition for me was, you know, the negativity thought on, on the industry was, you know, anybody can get a real estate license, yep. anybody can sell a house, this is BS, you know, I'm tired of seeing, you know, Joe Schmo pop up and, and sell that house when it right. really should go to the true professional. And um, Which I believe the customer deserves. And right. you believe the customer deserves. The totally. customer deserves the, the right person dealing with it, not just the cheapest, not just their buddy, not just whatever, right? And this goes back to the way that, like, I want people to start thinking about every decision that they make in life. And that's it, it all starts up here, whether you want to think about that half, you know, that glass half full or half empty. Mm-hmm. And that the transition for me was um, looking at those same people that I was disgruntled about being in the business and using that as fuel for myself as a competitive person, I said, those are the people I'm going up against right. in listings. Those are the people right. I'm competing with, with buyers. And I, 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 at that point, it was so clear to me right then that, yeah, I'm going to eat this alive now because yeah. not only I'm not, I'm not working with Harvard grads, you know, on, you know, right. whatever it might be, but what I'm sized up against on a daily basis, these people, you know, sometimes I'm impressed that some of them even know how to get right, dressed and show, show up, up to work. <laughs> <laughs> they show up dressed to the appointment. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so having that transition in my mind was really big for me um, personally and, and then definitely professionally to, to yeah. use that as a competitive driver because we, we actually talked about competitive driver mm-hmm. um, in one of our previous podcasts. But anyway, that's that's kind of my my thought process on changing your uh, changing your outlook on your own industry. Cool. So let's uh, so let's uh, so let's dig right into this, yeah. right? So what? Uh, so how about this for a format? We'll go through the question, talk about some of the responses we got and everything, and then how about if you and I kind of throw out there how we how we deal with that when we're seeing it from uh, yeah. you know coaching the agents that. that we're dealing with, right? Yeah. 
So let's um, dive in. Yeah, so one of the one of the biggest things that uh, that that we saw, and we're going to kind of save maybe the best for last on this, but one of the biggest things that we saw was was people talking about the expenses whenever they were getting in there, mm-hmm. right? So some people said, you know, I wish I would have known, you know, how long it was going to be before my first transaction, right? Some people said, you know, I wish I would have known how much expense there was before I actually started earning. Where do I spend my money? Right. Yeah, and right. What do I do with, you know, uh, t- I wish I would have known more about taxes, you know, mm-hmm. understanding, you know, how taxes work and all that kind of stuff. We got a couple of those. <laughs> I got a good story. <laughs> So, uh, so you know, we love it that that people are, you know, so sometimes people get in the business and they start earning right away, right? Mm-hmm. And so that can be a good or bad thing. You and I have talked about that, right? If they jump right in and they start earning and they're not really trained, then they think it's easy. And a year later, when that well dries up, yeah, they're, they're, they have a very false idea of how they got started, right? Okay. Yeah, and complacency sets in. Right. Yeah. And, and so, so whenever that kind of stuff is, is happening, they also don't pay attention to what's going on with their expenses. Right. So from day one, they start getting phone calls from everybody and the brother. Do you want to buy this? 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 And so some of them bite on that, mm-hmm. right? So from an expense standpoint, you know, one of the, the biggest things uh, whenever I'm talking to, uh, you know, my talking to my peeps and they're, they're in there and we're coaching with them, you know, I make sure that they know that they have to make sure they're tracking their expenses in a way that makes it easy. Yeah. Right? So and it has to fit what, what's the, my little two cents on that would be it has to fit their personality too. And right. so um, being able to change our angle of attack as brokers or as coaches and understand the person across the table yep. on how 100%. they want to do things because, you know, you're not going to make somebody who's a high I um, right. break down an Excel spreadsheet. That's it's just right. not going to happen. Gonna That's right. Yeah. So, so one of the things that I, that, that I talk them through is, you know, get a, get a singular credit card. Everything goes on that credit card. Yep. Don't put anything on it that's not supposed to be on there. But just put that stuff on it and pay it every month, right? right. So that's one of the big things that, that we talk about. Corporate structures is kind of a bigger deal. We, we could discuss that. I do go into that a little bit more in, in coaching. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we have somebody that comes in and talks to them on a regular basis in our office. Yeah. But the, uh, but the other thing is, you know, put your money in one account and then pay yourself from that account right? instead of putting your commission checks directly into that, yeah. right? So I know you and I have talked about this. You know, yeah. they, they get that commission check and they skip over to the, you know, they skip over to the bank and they sign the back of it and, hey, it's time to, you know, woohoo, conquer the world. Right. So, you know, look at look at what you need from a salary standpoint mm-hmm. and start dumping that money in there and pushing that to it, and which actually, you know, goes back to that corporate structure, mm-hmm. understanding that you actually have a business. Right. You know, somebody that has a great business doesn't take every dime out of what comes in revenue, right? right. They build, uh, right? So uh, so that's a couple of the things that, that, you know, I make sure that, that I talk about whenever I'm doing that. And I know that my agents have heard it. I know your agents have heard it. I don't know if everybody's heard it, so that's part of the reason why we wanted to, wanted to talk about it. But that also makes it easier whenever it comes time to do your taxes and everything, right? Oh my God, so much easier. I remember my first year trying to oh. trying to jump down that tax. I, right. I I I was a complete idiot, and, and my first year um, spending money like crazy. I was finishing my master's while I was working full time in real estate. Right. Um, still living in a college town. Right. And so how'd that go? Yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> so not only was I in grad school. But I had a lot of friends who were still either an undergrad, um, or you know, I was still surrounded some of my, <clears throat> my some of my fraternity, you know, members. And great time. I remember working like really hard, going to night school, and then you know, the money that I made in that first year, I thought I was a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> making it rain everywhere. You went. <laughs> like it's funny to go from dirt poor in college to where like you're just oh yeah you know your 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 checking is is bouncing you know several mm-hmm. times and um i just remember starting to really make some money in real estate going holy shit yeah and boy did i spend it oh yeah yeah i spent every dollar and then i and i sit down with my accountant and my financial advisor at the end of the year going all right, had a good year. What's going on? Yeah. What's what's uh, what's what this whole situation look like? <laughs> and they're like, "Well, you owe you know X amount of dollars." I go, "I don't have that." Right. And they're like, "What do you mean? Haven't you been paying quarterly?" No. What's that mean? Yeah. And so, long story short, I had to dip Absolutely. into my life savings that I had, you know, since I was a little kid working and whatever pa- to put it. That's to I- pay my taxes. I will never forget that ever. And so. That is was such an important lesson to me, and not only that, but until you see that first tax bill, yeah, I don't know that anybody really gets it. Yeah, 
but but it it's puts, a sh- sticker shock. It is, and, <laughs> and 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 it puts such a weight on so many people. I've I've got top performing uh, top performing agents that are finishing their taxes right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they're very thorough about what they do. They do a good job on con- you know controlling their expenses. They make sure that it's you know the numbers fifteen to twenty percent. You know, if you're doing your advertising, typically your advertising goes towards some of that and everything, right. but that doesn't, you know, that doesn't finish all of it, right? And and so they're out there, you know, right now getting through that part of it yeah. because they're gonna they're gonna file in October, but they've been paying quarterly. Yeah, you know? and that's an important so, thing we should bring up right now is the yeah. quarterly payments. Yeah. Um, really, I, I I mean, I it should in my eyes almost be a mandatory thing that if right. you're a 1099, um, you know you need to pay quarterly period not only does it help by the end of the year you don't get this astronomical bill you just you're paying it off in chunks and it feels better that way so i can digest it you know mm-hmm. that's my personality a little bit better but you're managing things a little bit better and so you start mindset, to see things your, your mindset is a more true business owner mindset yeah i mean so at that point you know <clears throat> people that own businesses absolutely have to pay taxes, right? right? Especially if the business profitable, doing well, all that kind of stuff, you can expect to stroke a check. So a lot of things that, that uh, you know, and this came up in the, you know, it came up in the, uh, you know, the questions, you know, a lot of times people kind of felt like they had a job mindset still, right? When they actually should have had a business owner's mindset. And you could tell reading some of it, because, you know, the question I, 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 it's a funny I, dynamic too. Yeah. So Justin, and I wanted to make sure that we got as many responses back as possible, right? So what we put in there was, Keep the answer as short as you want to keep it. It can be one word if you want to if you want to do that, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Which some people did. Yeah. Other people couldn't keep it to one word, mm-hmm. right? <clears throat> Other people, you know, had you know elaborated. Yeah. And one of the big things that we saw was people that were previous salespeople that had been in a sales job. Yeah. Looked at it differently. Completely that, different. Right. And so they, you know, they weren't as worried about their taxes the same way and all that kind of stuff and everything. So that was pretty interesting that people talked about, you know, I wish I would have known the business structure and would have known that, that it's a, actually a business instead of a, instead of a job. So, yeah. And that's, that's an interesting thing because I run into that quite a bit when I'm recruiting or I'm hiring and, you know, it occurred to me when I, when I started real estate, it was almost like a no brainer. Yeah. You're, you're going to work for yourself, but um, to assume that is is foolish, and you know, I have gotten better at not assuming on a lot of instances in in my career. But um, definitely, you need to look at this if you're getting into real estate or if you're in real estate. This is absolutely your own business. You're an entrepreneur. Um, you're everything. You're wearing every hat possible, and so do not come into the business thinking that this is some sort of uh, job corporate job, <clears throat> some salary that, that you're going to make. Uh, it's, it's not even close to that. I mean, you, you, you're eating what you kill. That's right. Outdoor cat instead of an indoor cat. Yeah. 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 That makes a, that makes all the difference in the world if they get that mindset earlier on. Yeah. Which kind of leads directly into, uh, you know, some of the other answers that, uh, some of the other answers that we got that were kind of, uh, you know, kind of bulked together is people, what they wish they, so they talked a lot about knowing now uh, understanding the business now, meaning real estate and what to do and what not to do and the differences, understanding all of that better sooner. Because a lot of them said, you know, I really thought I got this. Yeah. And until I was in the middle of it, I didn't really realize what, what I didn't know. Right? right. And so they talked about mentors and they talked about training and they talked about support. I'm kind of bundling all of that, all that together. Right. And so you and I have talked about mentors before, right? And I don't, I don't know, know that we see mentors exactly the, the same way. And I'd, I'd like to discuss that just a little yeah. bit. So, uh, you know, so the so the mentor part of it, you know, I have people ask me all the time, you know, do you have mentors in the in the office, right? And uh, I've got people that will help out with all the little pieces of what you do. Here's what I'm most afraid of with uh, with mentors, mm-hmm. is if if I push somebody off to a mentor, right? The things that they learn how to do really well that the mentor does really good, they grab onto that, they love that, they bond with the person, they connect with them, they learn. <laughs> but the things that the mentor doesn't do well, yeah, they, they pick up those bad habits. They don't immediately. even realize. <laughs> yeah, right? they That's don't even bad, know. They yeah. don't know. They don't know. Osmosis. Right. And so you know, I I like having a bunch of different people that agree to help out with a bunch of different parts yeah. that they're really good at and they're passionate about versus right. one size fits all. Right. Is how I, is how I look at that. Now, if you've got the right mentor, that's all the difference in the world. And I know that's the frame that, that you come from with this is if you've got the right person, yeah, they're going to they're gonna take you to that whole next level. Right. right. I mean, it ta- <clears throat> I think it takes a, a really mature 
and uh, you know business proven mind to see somebody day in and day out on a mentorship basis and really seek to take the positive but at the same time I mean some of my life my best life lessons from mentors or people that I considered mentors at that time um, was picking up on their failures and, and understanding where those downfalls are and, and, and where that would going to lead them in the future. Just because somebody's successful doesn't mean that they have a whole list of, right. of, of troubling issues. But right. um, I'll, I'll be honest in saying that's why I like um, one-on-one mentorship programs is because it is the good and the bad. Right. And I like that authentic real life yeah. feeling to it. And if you're able to understand and, and um, you know, communicate and learn from the good and the bad of that mentor, you're going to be that much better. Because I, I personally, I agree, I agree I, with that 100%. Yeah. I grow more on my failures than I do my successes. And if I'm with a mentor, I'm going to grow more by seeing us fall. Right. Then, you know, then, then the rise. So, so how do we say that whenever we're coaching? So part of, part of the conversation, whenever I'm, whenever I'm coaching with people is, you know, some people just say, Hey, I really want to sit next to somebody. I don't want to go on my first listing appointment. I want to go on two of them before. So some of that is personality, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, some of that is, you know, confidence, you know, competency breeds confidence, right? So yeah. they want to be competent with things before they, so I always have the conversation with them. Your eyes have to be wide open on everything as a whole. Right? You'll There's, miss it. That's right. And, uh, and I think if people, you know, if they take a step back on a regular basis and look at that, I think that they're going to be okay. Yeah. But, other, you know, sometimes people don't do that. Yeah. And if they don't do that, they, then they end up in a, in a situation. Because so, I, I, you know, I'm the, I'm the other end of that. There was, there was habits that I learned that I didn't realize. Oh, that, I'm guilty that, of that. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I, we picked things up. And, you know, the, the situation I was in, I just kind of trusted that that person was, was doing the, the right thing in the real estate business. And there was a couple of things that I learned that I had to that I had to unlearn, you know, whenever yeah. I whenever I started to swim. So, but you're, exa- I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head. That helped me grow, and now I have a perspective that I think I can help more people with because I can see both sides of that see both sides of that coin. Yeah. And so that's what I try to get across whenever I'm coaching is, you know, if you are working with a with another coach, if you're working with a mentor, if if you're working with me, it's not like I I don't make mistakes and it's not like I don't screw totally. things up. Yeah. So so go go get a different frame of reference. Go go pick some other things. Don't just grab onto that one mentor. Don't yeah. just grab onto that one person and assume that they just because they're successful that everything that they do will make you successful. Right. And so that was a, you know, whenever they talked about training, that was a big part of what they talked about. I wish I would have known which training to take. And that's the thing. So when you get a mentor, I would be really, really careful in who you pick as your mentor because um, we know plenty of really successful real estate agents, um, you know, we're around, you know, success all the time. And what makes one agent successful in how they do their business and what makes another agent successful can be completely Absolutely. different. And one of them is not right and one of them is not wrong. That's right. But what you need to do when you're looking at a mentor is that mentor needs to fit your personality type and where you're actually um, you know, comfortable breaking outside of your comfort zone and at the same time comfortable going down that path. Um, so that's agree. that would be my two cents there because if you're not... Um, able to, to to grab a mentor that has your same personality traits or or the person that you want to be, then I, I do think that you are maybe wasting time or, or setting yeah. yourself up for failure because, um, like yeah. I said, so many people do business so many different ways, and there's a million ways to Six, yeah. your idea of quote unquote success. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So uh, so uh, I would I would absolutely. Uh, suggest that everybody out there has a tra- uh, training journal that they keep. Yeah. Right? Which classes did you take? How'd you like it? What was the main thing that you got? Put it all in a, in a book like this. You know, go to the class, get your PowerPoints or whatever it is. Go to your coaching session. Go to your mentoring. Get all of what normally they hand uh, they hand out to you. And then go back and condense that into a singular place, right? If it's something that you can't get to and there's not time to get it figured out right now, put a star next to it. Go back and revisit that on a regular basis. But journal your uh, journal your education. There was a uh, there was something. So you know, we're, you know, we're uh, Tammy and I are writing a book on something, right? Mm-hmm. So you know that. And uh, and so you know, one of the things that happened really early on, had I been paying attention to the education that I had, it would have made a big difference. Tens of thousands of dollars easily. Yeah, but you were in the trenches. I was. Yeah. And and so, uh, you know, if I would have kept a journal, 
it would have helped keep all of that kind of lined up a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And when, and you know, so when, you know, journaling now, whenever I feel I'm lost in something, I go back and look at my journal. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't allow my now mindset to be negatively impacted by what I've been thinking the whole time. Cause if you're journaling stuff, you're seeing it over and over and over. Right? It becomes like a lifetime playbook almost. It does. Yeah. Yeah. I it's agree. good to look back at. Yeah. I agree. You came up, you, you said something that really, uh, piques my interest as a subject on, on the answers that, that we got back from this. And this is something that we deal with, with really experienced agents and new agents alike entrepreneurs. It doesn't matter your walk of life, but this is something that we work with all the time is confidence. Yeah. And, and where does confidence come from? Um, how are you, how are some people, you know, able to be confident right out the uh -huh. get go. So I want to, I want to talk a little bit on confidence and, and how much that will mean in your real estate career. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a great, it's a, especially it's, starting out. Yeah. A fantastic topic. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of what the, a lot of the answers that they got, that's a, this is a really good point, Justin, that a lot of the answers that we got back were pe people dealt with things a certain way because they weren't confident in their, in their, in how they were dealing with it. And so they kind of got scattered. They, they yeah. went all over the place. So, uh, so what I said just a second ago was competency breeds confidence, right? Yeah. So, and, and so there, there's people that can be really confident in something because they think they're doing it right and they're not right. right? Okay. So happens, happens all the time. I'm going to go back to the, go back to the karate days. And, uh, so, you know, there, there was people that got into martial arts and, and got their black belt. And whenever they got their black belt, they literally stopped their learning because that was the, that was the end of what, right. Yeah. And so, you know, a black belt is, is typically the beginning. Yeah, it's sure. not the, it's not the end, right? Sure. And uh, you know, most people, the public, all that kind of stuff, thinks that, that that's like the end all, be all. That just means that you've mastered the basics well enough. That's where a black belt came from. It got so dirty because you, it was holding your pants up, right? right? So it got black because you practiced so much. So now you know the basics, and now it was time to now it was time to move forward. Mm -hmm. But there were people in karate that would do the same thing for twenty or twenty five years, and you talk to them, right? And they would say, "Oh, well, I've, you know, I've been doing karate for twenty five years, and they're literally doing the same exact thing, right?" So Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan and, and all of the greats, you know, part of the reason why they were great is because they expanded outside what their initial discipline was. Mm -hmm. Real estate agents have to do that same thing. I agree. You can't keep practicing the same thing you learned. Right. So so we've got that accelerating inertia going on, right? Mm -hmm. Snowball's rolling down the hill. It's picking up more snow. It's picking up speed. There's gravity working on it. That's what's happening in real estate. Yeah. If, if you try to stay stagnant and what you learned last week, last year, two years ago, What's going to end up happening is you're going to be really confident in it because you feel very competent and that's going to breed that confidence that doesn't make it right. Right. That just because you practice the sidekick that many times doesn't mean the sidekick is the only thing that'll work. Right. Just because you do your contract the same way doesn't mean that that contract, that, that it, that the contract hasn't changed. Right. That just because you used to prospect a certain way doesn't mean that's going to always continue to work. Right. Right. Hobbs Herder is a, is a perfect example of that. You know, Hobbs Herder and, you know, did that, did that study, you know, the 5,000 homes, you know, everybody's probably heard of this, but Hobbs Herder, big marketing company, very successful in what they do, you know, sent, you know, had people door knock a whole bunch of doors and then said, what's your top favorite, you know, real estate agent? Who would you use? They gave a whole bunch of names. There was five people that were up at the top. They mailed some stuff out for two months, you know, consi really consistently came back, knocked on the doors. The number one person was somebody that Hobbs Herder made up. Right. Wasn't even a real real estate agent, but everybody was saying, hey, that's who I would use. And that's right. And that's because consistently, yeah. again, going back to Atomic Habits, what is easy, what's consistent is right. what people automatically fall to. Yep. So just because they're competent in something because somebody's done it over and over doesn't mean that that their confidence is going to be in the right place. Totally agree. Doesn't mean you've got the best listing appointment. Doesn't mean you've got the, the you know, that you know the as is contract better than anybody else or know yeah. the option contract better than anybody else. So being confident, if, if I was going to advise an agent to be confident in something, it's confident in their desire to learn. Yeah. Constantly grow. That's right. So, Shift on your feet. Right. So yeah. if you if you know that you're practicing growing and learning, you know you're going to end up in the right place in the end. It's because you're investing in yourself is Absolutely. really what you're saying. So, you, you know, if you're Absolutely. going to be confident, being confident means you're really uh, investing your, in yourself to the core. You're not you're not investing in um your company, you're not investing everything, all of your confidence into your broker. You're not investing, you know, everything that you have into, um, your family, let's say you have to do it for you. And that's where the confidence comes right. from inside out. Because I think that people can read you like a book if there's this fake confidence shell. Right. Um, 
And, and there's something I want to touch on. So, you know, when when people are in real estate, especially in their very first two years, that seems to be the eclipse of when people either mm -hmm. really take off in real estate or say this isn't for me. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that that confidence is is a tough thing to gain because when people first get into real estate, they don't realize how competitive it really is, especially right. to be on the top end of right. this thing. Um, so to, to gain confidence right out the gate, you do need the mentors. You do need um, a lot of things. You need people on your team. Um, An arsenal of support. Yeah. yeah. But I'm really, really big on preparation, uh, creating confidence. And for me specifically, when I first started out, I didn't know jack shit just like everybody else when right. they first get into real estate, right. right? In fact, it was worse because I didn't know the area and right. where I started doing real estate. I had no idea what I was talking about. Right. Um, but the biggest thing that helped me uh, overcome that um, was preparation. Yeah. You know, when, when, when preparation meets opportunity, you, you get success. Mm -hmm. um, but the preparation bit for me is, and this is something that I harp to my new agents all the time, I want them to play games and understand the market really quickly. And you do a fantastic job of helping your agents do that. I mean, you, you do I love that aspect yeah. of it. Yeah. And it's it, it's not it shouldn't be a, a a dull, boring task that you do every day. But I, I stress that so much because the moment that you get caught off guard, the first time that you get caught off guard yeah. by somebody on the street, you're having a glass of wine, let's say on the weekend at a you know whatever at a, at a golf course. You know you're yeah, going to say golf golf course, course. <laughs> right? And somebody says, "Oh, did you see uh, you know one two three Apple Street came on the market? What do you think of that price? What do you think of the house?" And you're sitting there blindsided by that question. The fact that that consumer knows more about your oh, yeah. your backyard than you do, I promise you it'll take you one time to realize that's never going to happen again. Right. And then your confidence crashes, right? <sighs> Completely. You, you have a very hard time of getting that back in that person's eyes. You have a very hard time of that. So so whenever, I, you know, I have agents ask me all the time about CMAs, right? Yeah. And so there's like 98 different tools that you can buy, <laughs> on, you know. Yeah, you which know, CMA uh, tool do you want? That's right. So I, I saw something really cool the other day. It said uh, the A and Zillow is for accuracy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's badass. I like that. <laughs> I just blew my mic out. <laughs> <laughs> so, I like the, uh, that. so whenever I talk about the CMA, I don't talk about any of those programs, right? I take a, I take a, sheet, a sheet of paper out, and I draw a bunch of boxes, and I say, this is the, the things that are in the property. Here's the market six months ago. Here's the market 12 months ago. And then I start talking about how all of those facts can shift yeah. and how... You know, sometimes people, you know, they don't want to cross water, a waterway or a major highway to, yeah. get a, to get a comp sometimes. Other people will go. So you have no idea where people are going to do this. So I tell them, when you sit down at the table, the comps that you use don't have anything to do with all the comps that you've explored. I uh, totally agree. All the comps that you've explored, yeah. and that's what you're talking about with preparation. Yeah. You better have looked at everything. And, and it's important. That's what. That's where it goes back to the mentor. Tap into that mentor because there's a good chance that if that mentor is as good as they, you know, should oh, yeah. be, um, they know those idiosyncrasies. Yeah. I mean, just Absolutely. in my neighborhood alone, you could go down one street and I could tell you why one side of the street is more expensive than the other side of the street. Why yep. um, a certain view orientation in a, you know in a north or south or, or east or west reference right. Right. has more value to it than the other side. Absolutely. And when we, when we talk about realtors and really realtors moving forward from 2019, 2020 into the future, you have to Completely add right. value. And it starts with knowing your market. It starts with knowing your shit. Depth. I mean, you have to do it. So, so the, the plus on big data is there's a ton of data out there, right? Mm -hmm. The minus on it is there's a ton of data out there, right? <laughs> right. It's so just the, overload that's sometimes. Right. So a consumer is going to get the, the clips. They're mm -hmm. going to get the cliff notes. You have to be able to dig in on certain things that, that are going to make all the difference in the world, and that is understanding marketing, yeah. and that is understanding the market. Yeah, and, and what, your client. And what drives activity. Yep. So if you've got all those things and you have them figured out, your confidence is going to be what it needs to be. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to, you're going to understand stuff the way that, you're, that you should understand things. By qualifying your buyer right from the get-go uh, and understanding exactly what they're looking for, um, not necessarily square footage, bed, bath. I, I think that those are, those are questions that come out in the wash, and that's easy. Right. Um, really asking the real questions yeah. of what their goal is and, and, and really what their desire is behind that purchase makes you so much better and then and then combine that with your market 
uh, understanding and you, you combine that with, you know, your knowledge of the area and, and direction and, you know, why you want to be on the west side of this road as opposed to the east side of the road, all of a sudden you are freaking Pink Floyd. You're, that's your real resource. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I told a little bit of this story before, but I'll, it, it's perfect in this, uh, and, and he actually responded back to this. So, you know, Sean's a, Sean's a beast, right? High analytical guy and everything. So when he first got in the business, he was getting out of engineering, right? And yeah. he was getting into, and he was getting into real estate. And so he and I met on a, met on a regular basis later in the, the afternoon, you know, he didn't get off till five or something. We met at five thirty or six. Mm-hmm. And so one Monday he comes in and he looks like stir fried shit. Okay? <laughs> so here's what he was here's what he was doing. So I mean, uh, I think I remember was, this story. Oh my god, his hair was messed up. He looked exhausted. This was before his baby, right? So it, it can't blame it on can't blame it on all that. So he comes in. He'd been working all weekend, and you know he was dealing with Aria buyers. This is when the market was still, you know, still had a bunch of Aria buyers, right? So he's dealing with Aria buyers. So yeah. of course they're jerking him around, like you know. All right. So. Uh, so he comes in and I'm like, dude, you look, you look terrible, man. You know, he goes, I was working all weekend. I'm doing stuff at night and on my break and trying to get all this figured out. It can impact my job, but I, you know, I got to get this done and everything. And I said, so how many buyers are you working with right now? And he starts going through it and all that kind of stuff. And I, and he starts explaining, and I, I asked this. him a couple of questions <laughs> and I said, listen, dude, stop right there. No, really? <laughs> yeah. I said, I said, stop. I don't want you to call anybody back. Now I'm not, if anybody knows me out there. If there's one thing I will say is you better call somebody back, right? Oh, that's so, my pet peeve. Right. So I said, don't call anybody back. Yeah. On Thursday, I want you to come back in, and here's what I want you to do. Here's this pre-qualification form, and I want you to get answers. So you can go to the answer that you know because you've had the conversation, or you can talk to these people about this after Thursday. I want you to. I want to see how many of these people you have sixty percent of the real answers that you're confident in those answers. Game changer. So he comes back in on Thursday. He's got a stack about this big, and a stack about this big, and the stack about this big. I I, I said, okay. So if you left for a week, <laughs> out of those two stacks, who would still work with you? And he said, these people. And I said, how many of these people do you have? He said, that's like 70% of them or better. Or I've got it filled out and I'm confident in the answers. And I said, okay, what about that other stack? He said, they won't call me back or they won't give me the answer. And then they call in the middle of the day and they this and they that and all that kind of stuff. And I said, okay, who's burning your time up? These people or this big stack of these other people? What a cool epiphany. And, and so he he was like, it's this group of people, and this and so whenever I'm saying it like this, is it's it's kind of a little bit off because all these papers were folded and crunched and all that kind of stuff, and this was all a clean <laughs> little pile because this was easy to get the answers because they had a real connection. He's on the phone with the other people <laughs> crumpling the paper. Up. <laughs> what do you mean you got to meet me in ten minutes? From that point on, tire kickers. From that point on, Sean pre qualifies like a beast. Yeah. When he says he has a transaction. He has a transaction. Yeah. When he says he has a buyer, he has a buyer. Yeah. And so from that point on, whenever I saw him, it was probably a month after that that he was able to transition. How long was he estate. in the business before until you had this conversation? Oh, so uh, he he about twelve or thirteen months is when he transitioned, and this was a month and a month and a half before he transitioned. Okay. So he had been working hard. Yeah. Two jobs. With REO buyers yeah. for 10 months, 11 months. That that exact same thing happened to me. I remember uh, just beating my head against the wall. All I wanted to do, if you were willing to get into my car, <laughs> I was going to show you houses. <laughs> I was going to show you houses. And I pray we can write an offer. And baby... <laughs> We'll deal about we'll we'll work the offer later, but I am in real estate. I have you in my car, <laughs> and I'm going to show you 35 homes if you want to see 35 homes. I shit you not. I spent my whole I would say my Holy first cow. eight months just. You want to hop in? You don't look like a killer or somebody's going to hurt me. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not a Ish. killer. <laughs> right. uh, let's go. Right. And I'll I'll never forget. I showed some this couple. In Benita Springs, I, I can still see their faces. God bless them, kind of. Right. Um, I showed them 26 homes, and then, like, that was like a weekend, by the way. Like, wow. Like, really grind, wow. grinded that thing out. And then they just ghosted me, and they never bought anything. And that, that to me was, okay, I got to get a little bit more tactful <laughs> right. on who I choose to be my clients. And understand in real estate, you can pick your clients. It's Absolutely. not clients just picking you. It is a, uh, it is a relationship. It is a consulting business. But uh, the quicker you understand 
and are able to qualify buyers and sellers, and this is somebody where you need to lean on with your mentor, uh, the quicker you're not only going to be more successful, but um, your confidence is going to grow. Because I, I promise you, your confidence will plummet if you just stick anybody who you know wants to go look at houses in your car and go look at houses. It's it's just going to happen. You're just going to feel like there. Some people are life sucking vampires. Yeah. Right. And so the reason why we put them in our car is because as things are happening, we get into that scarcity mindset, right? So uh, let's talk about scarcity mindset and abundance mindset. Totally. There is an abundance of people that want the services that you offer, whether it's real estate or you're a mortgage guy or you're a contractor or you're a fitness guy or whatever, whoever it is. If you're doing the right thing, there is an ab- there's 7 billion people, right? Mm-hmm. There's an abundance of people that want to do business with you, and you can succeed at a really high level if you focus on the people that match what you're looking for and you truly offer what's best for them. There's a ton of people that want to work with you. Do not think you got to put somebody in the car. Do not think that you've got to get jerked around by somebody just because they made the promise that one day they're going to buy a house from you, but yet they won't tell you who the lender is that they're pre-qualified with. Yeah. And they won't tell you the, you know, what the price point of the house is. Don't worry, I've got that figured out. Man, just move on. Yeah. Nicely move on. Yeah. And your confidence will skyrocket. Because totally. what's going to happen is totally. you're going to spend that time, like those stack of papers, you're going to start spending those time on those people, and those people are going to convert. And those people are going to refer other people. And yeah. those people are going to connect with you in a way that they want to help you with your business because now you're able to spend that time with them and everything just explodes from there. There is an abundance of great people that want to work with great people. There is not a scarcity of them. There's, there's an interesting thing about, I would say, the majority of people out there and how our mind works. And I think that... A majority of people in the world, period, want to be quote unquote busy. Okay. Oh, I agree. And there's a big difference between being busy and being successful. Yep. Okay. You can spend your whole life being busy. Right. And I know plenty of people that do it. And right. so this is something that I hammer into agents. I hammer into people who uh, are in mentorship roles with me in and outside of real estate. Oh, yeah. Do not focus on being busy. Busy is just going to drive yourself crazy. It's a mental game to yourself, and a lot of things are going to go wrong. Absolutely. Do not confuse activity with accomplishment. Boom. And uh, and again, Atomic Habits goes into that. Yeah, yeah big time. That I, I yeah. just great book. We could great we book. could dive into that that pretty uh, pretty oh, yeah. deep. Yeah, that would be um, that would be an hour easy. But stop focusing on being busy all hours of the day, all minutes of the day, and really strategize and have a game plan for moving forward. And, and all of a sudden, uh, your lack of um, need to be busy will yeah. all of a sudden fuel your life. And then you're going to have pockets of your day and pockets of your week where you're able to spend time with your kids and your family. And you're going to go exercise. You're going to be able to go see the sunset. And you're going to be able to go have dinner because yep. you are on purpose, not on accident. Right. And, and so you, you just, you hit on a, on a great point to that, you know, so when you talk to people about their money, do you like spending your money or do you like investing your money? <laughs> people say all the time they'd rather invest their money, right? Sometimes yeah. they want to spend some of it, but they want to invest their money. But they're talking out of their mouth of that. Right, that's right. <laughs> and, and the reality is they, they do the same thing with their time, which yeah. is what's more important than money, right? Time. Yeah. And so what do people do with their time? Do they spend their time or do they invest their time? Right. If, and, and it's not like, it's no fun if all you do is invest, yeah. right? So you can't just invest all of your time, all, you know, all, right? But, but you can't just spend all your time sure. all the time either. There's a delicate balance there. And, and so, so it's, we're going to take it one more step than that, right? Mm-hmm. So I hear parents talk all the time, and, and I'm one of them, right? I hate it when my kids spend my money in a way that I wouldn't spend my money. Oh, right? totally. Yeah. yeah, like getting a $600 speeding ticket. Anyway. Right, so. We're not pointing anybody out. No, we're not, we're not <coughs> pointing anybody out. So, but they spend my money. So I think, man, I could have done something investment-wise better with my, with my money. But yet I let people spend my time just as frivolously Ugh. instead of investing my time, yeah. right? So, so, you know, I, I think, you know, confidence, you know, we, we started on confidence on this, you know, the, the big thing on confidence is if, if you're truly competent in what you do, if you're doing it the right way, if you're really paying attention and being intentional with what you're doing, you're not going to waste your time. You're going to, you're going to invest it. You're going to make sure that you're doing things the right way. You're going to make sure your CMA is correct. You're going to make sure people are pre-qualified. You're going to make sure all those things are happening. And all of a sudden your confidence is going to go up because you know that you're designing what you're doing. And all of a sudden, by doing that, you're attracting what you want. Absolutely. You're not, you're not pulling at anything. 
all of a sudden, all of the opportunities are coming your way. And all of a sudden, you start to see yourself being surrounded by like-minded people and successful people. Absolutely. That is a dramatic change. You cannot just start hanging out with successful people or positive people. It starts here first, and then the attraction comes later. 100% agree. And your life path completely Absolutely. changes because of that. I promise you, I am proof of just starting here and letting the rest come right. and then taking advantage from there. But you got to start here on a personal level first before you're ever going to be successful professionally. Right. Yeah, I, I should say that there's plenty of successful professionals who have a totally screwed up personal right. life and their head is in a million different places. But what we're talking about is, is true success in and out of your career. And... and is there success duplicatable? So there's a bunch of people that have succeeded in one very specific thing. Yeah. And then maybe they struggle in the rest of what they do. Yeah. And then there's some people that have succeeded wherever you take them, wherever you put them, they're going to land on their feet. Right. Those are the ones that you have to take a look at and say, okay, how did they how did they do that? What's and going on there? Right. And it's because they're intentional. You know, I mean, yeah. we know that. The people out there know that. We just want to make sure that we're uh, we just want to make sure that we're reiterating the, the importance of that. And the importance of, of being confident in, in the idea of success is a long-term and lifetime achievement. Absolutely. And it will ever be changing. So once you reach that destination, you're looking at the horizon again. That's right. Um, so, so I caution people, especially people getting into real estate or who are in real estate, who are looking for that quick buck or who, who are looking for that really fast success. I promise you, the people that I know that rose the quickest... Um, are not around anymore. Right. And, and I have a couple uh, friends or, or colleagues that I used to be agree. with. Yep. Um, but if you're in it for the long haul and you're investing in yourself personally and professionally. And you're investing in the relationships you have with people. That's, truly investing. Th yeah. That's really, really. I mean, if you're going to make it in this business or e even to really just be a better person, you know, yeah. I, I think at the end of the day to, to become a better person every day throughout the rest of your life. Um, should be all of our one of our top goals, um, and and that that unfolds into your daily life and into your career, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're you're concentrating on what matters, and then everything else is just happening for you. Yeah, you, you like know? you like who and what you are. Yeah, yeah. So the uh, so that kind of brings us to you know we touched on just a second ago you know the people around you, which was one of the biggest things that came back from everybody was the importance of their sphere of influence. Right. Okay. So let's uh, and that was kind of the that's that's kind of the crescendo, right? Yeah. So let so let's talk about all that because that's a that's a lot of different things. So Sounds so good. people said everything from, you know, I wish I would have started on my database sooner. I wish I would have <laughs> connected with my sphere of influence. You know, it hurt my feelings when a when a good friend bought with somebody else because I thought that you know I you know I didn't want to be a salesperson, so I didn't connect with them, and they sold with somebody else, and it hurt my feelings. There there was a lot of all of that that happened that all centered around the people around you. And how connected were, were they with your business? Yes, and uh, and so there was there was a uh, I would say a third of the answers maybe, and this is me guessing. I didn't I didn't do the math on this, but but from a guessing standpoint, a third of the answers talked about database or sphere of influence. Yeah, from experienced people. Here's what here's what I noticed: new people did not talk about that. <laughs> People that were six months or a year in the business were not saying, I wish I would have worked on my database sooner, right. right? So yesterday in a coaching session, I was talking to somebody, and they said, you know, my business, it's, it's moving along, you know, decently and everything, but, you know, I'm kind of struggling with, you know, getting going in my prospecting in the morning because we talked about how important that is in the morning and everything, and, and they said, you know, I'm, I'm just struggling with that a little bit, and I said, well, do you, do you know why you're struggling with that a little bit? You've got transactions going and things are happening. Do you, do you know why you're struggling with that? And they said, no, and I said, because... If you miss, you know, the other the other parts of your day are, are pre-qualifying and presenting, right? Mm -hmm. And then you got administrative stuff you do. So there's prospecting, pre-qualifying, presenting, and administrative crap. Right. Prospecting, pre-qualifying, and presenting is about 80% of your day. Mm -hmm. Admins, the other 20%, if you do it right, it's less than that because you're outsourcing it. Anyway, with pre-qualifying, if you're doing the right job and you're having those questions, things come up that are reminders during your day that say, hey, don't forget about me. Hey, don't forget about me. Right. 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 If you're presenting, things come up. You know, hey, don't forget about me. Hey, don't forget about me. You know what prospecting does? Prospecting will sit in the corner and go, shh, go do everything else. Yeah. When you get ready. That's so true. I'll be right here. <laughs> that couldn't be more true. I'm Those not other moving. Things, that's right. I'm not doing anything. If you want to forget about me, forget about me. <laughs> and, and you will. 
But pre-qualifying and presenting, that's not what they do. Oh, no. You, there's, there's things that pop up. There's, there's automatically reminders. There's automatically your transactions moving. Automatically, you got to get inspection. easier to digest, that. yeah. That's right. And so it's easier to spend that time on it, and, and, right? So I said, I said, so tell me about the people in your sphere of influence. One of the examples I use all the time is if your mom or your dad or your best friend or your brother calls up right now and says... I really, I just signed the paperwork with somebody else to, to buy or sell or whatever through, through someone else. I didn't realize you were in the business. Are you going to feel like it was your fault or their fault? Take ownership of that thing. So if, if when they get to the point, so after a certain amount of time, every agent that's successful that has made it is always going to give you the same answer. Man, that's my fault. Yeah. Newer agents, people that are just beginning in sales, that's not how they look at it because they give the same they give the same cliche. I don't want to be looked at like a salesperson. Oh. So there's nothing wrong with being a salesperson as long as you're not using your superpowers to take advantage of other people. Get very well trained, do a great job, and help people do what they want to do in a high at a high level. Yeah, it's it just starts it starts inside again, and we're gonna, just going to go back to that yeah. because if same you're term. if you're owning up to your business and saying. Okay, I'm either doing the things that I'm supposed to be doing or I'm not. It's really that simple. Right. And uh, I, I would say a majority of people, you know, have an issue with owning up to, to those things because really that's an honest um, yeah. type of game that you it's have to tough. play with yourself. And nobody wants to be truly honest with themselves because no. then it's like... So it's much more fun to lie. It's abrasive. Just lie to yeah. yourself about it. <laughs> I, I was... And then ask yourself if you can get off the hook. Yeah, I'll let you off this time. It's toxic, though. I it mean, is. that that, is a, that is a cancer. If you surround yourself with people or right now there are family or friends around you that don't own up to their own, you know, BS, if, if they don't own up to their successes and failures... Um, there's an issue there, and I promise you that is way more contagious than the other way. Right. Right. So you know when when you're around somebody that really owns up to everything, oh my gosh, that's such a great role model, yeah. and that is a, that's a great way to look at things. And all of a sudden, you start getting all that positive energy. But innately, as a human being, the easiest thing that you can do is go the other route, and and that because it is easier that's the primal brain we're, we're not it's even gonna easier. get easier we're not we, we don't even need to get into that primal brain thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> i was sitting at dinner with some people the other night and i said i said yeah and the primal brain and this is why humans in this and and for like 30 seconds i just yeah. went like this ah, yeah. off the cliff with it it's and harder uh, it's harder to own up to things and it's easier to pass the buck stop is. passing the buck there are too many agents that i Agreed. know personally that pass the buck Blame everything on the market. Blame everything on exterior factors. And I'm going, wake up, man. This is so toxic. It's It brings everybody down in the room. You can feel the oxygen get pulled out yep. of the room. Stop that right now. If you want to succeed, look around you. Absolutely. Look around you. So the uh, uh, so uh, so lines of code, right? So it takes a whole bunch of lines <laughs> of code in order to, to run a program. Yeah. Okay. So every second of every day since everybody was born, they're absorbing lines of code. They're mm -hmm. looking around. They're seeing the, you know, the lights and the everything, and they're seeing you sitting next to them in the table and all that kind of stuff, and they're absorbing those lines of code. Those lines of code being around those people that are not positive, whether you like it or not, you are <laughs> absorbing those lines of code to run in your program. Hardwiring you. So the, the bad news is those lines of code are always there. Right? You don't get rid of them. The good news is joyful, abundant-minded people, that code is exponentially more powerful than any negative code that you can, that you can have. Yeah. It, it takes one line of code of that to override a bunch of other lines of code as long as you want to be that way. Key. As soon as you want to be that way, those codes will absolutely override. New neural pathways are created, and all of a sudden you look at everything in a different light, but you have to make that conscious decision to do it. Yeah. you got to focus on the morning on doing the things that you need to do. Change isn't easy. It is, it is not. And, I mean, and that's, that's it'll be the hardest man. thing people do is change, and you got to constantly change and constantly grow, but it, that is life struggle is continuing to grow and that is agree. the best part about life too at the right. same time i mean it if is the like, hardest yeah. grittiest thing that you can do is continue to grow and continue to be better but man is that fun it is yeah if you let it yeah yeah so the uh, so the database part of it you know people you know talked about you know getting in front of and getting in touch with and how hurtful it was whenever people made decisions that they wanted to help right 
that they weren't able to help. So the uh, so the other example that I use about you know why is it important for you to connect with uh, with the people that you know you know you need to connect with is when things go wrong, and so people always say I don't want to you know I don't want to be the pushy salesperson I don't want to be the person that you just call my family and saying hey do this and all that kind of stuff. When when the shit hits the fan in their transaction, they're gonna call you. Yeah, and you're not allowed to help. Yeah, you need to stay out of it. At that point, you, they have hired someone else to do that. Yeah. You can't just jump back in and start helping. Don't put your cape on and swing in like Tarzan and decide you're going to help yeah. now that it's too late. Yeah. When when things don't go the way that they're supposed to, they're going to look at you like a family member. Have them look at you on the front end. Be confident. Be competent. Do Know what you're supposed to know and yeah. then help them out. If right. you don't, don't help them. Right. Right. But but if you know what's going on, absolutely you should be reaching out to them on a regular basis. And this is coming from 30 40% of the people. Hey, I wish I would have done this earlier. I yeah. wish I would have taken control of that earlier. Yeah. So this isn't just Matt and Justin talking about right. this. This is a bunch of experienced people thinking it's one of the top two things that they want to relay to other people yeah. about the business. Yeah. A d- database, if you don't have a database... Start right now. Yeah. Uh, it's never too late. I mean, database is going to change your career. It's going to change the way that you look at real estate. and It's going to help you. Uh, for me, when I really got into databases, I've always had a database, but when I really got into it and really enjoyed it, um, it, it transformed my business even more into a real business. Absolutely. Okay. And that's a big transition for people. So yeah, database is step number one. Absolutely. One, completely 100% agree. Yeah. And coming from a lot of very experienced people, they, they, they agree too. So We have a lot of different database ideas and ways that you can create your database that yeah. are going to work with your personality and how you want to do this. So if you have questions about how to build your d- database or how to better use it for you and for your business... Reach out to Matt and I. Yeah, absolutely. So, there, so there's, so let's talk about what it, what we actually mean by a database, because I'm, because I've been using this whole time, been using it very generically. Yeah. So I don't, I don't care if you have index cards. Yeah. Right. I don't care if you have a, a CSV file. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you use Perfect Storm. I don't care if you use Reliance. I don't care if you use Top Producer. I don't care Salesforce. Whatever. I don't yeah. care. As long as it is in a place that you can use it as a repository for the connections you're making with people daily and gathering data yeah. on them yeah ha- so that you can really know what they're looking for right so if you're if you're really tracking and paying attention to to the conversations you're having with people they might say something right now that 6 months later when it's time for them to do that might actually be the real trigger of why they're doing what they're doing yeah and if they just call you, so, you know, we, we talk about this all the time, you know, the transaction starts here and it closes here. And many times this is where the real estate agent gets involved. Yeah. Many times. Yeah. The agent has to understand this part of it. That other piece, they have to understand it. That's a good way to put it. So if you don't, if you don't, if, if, you, if it falls in your lap, you have to go back and figure out the why. Right. If you started before they started, then when they start, you're going to be part of that decision. Right. And so that's part of the reason why it's so important to connect. So whenever we talk about database, it, to me and, and to Justin and to any good coach or manager, they really don't care where you're compiling it. As time passes, so, so what I do with people is I'm, as I'm dealing with them, as time passes, I'll start pointing them in a certain direction. Okay, you're really doing a good job on this, uh, but you need some adaptability, so maybe this is where you want to put it. To start with, it's always a CSV. Yeah. To start with, it's always just dump it in a singular place and we can figure out where it needs to go later yeah yeah totally agree i mean you don't see and, and the reason i bring this up is i just watched uh hbo's hard knocks i don't know if you watched that show mm-hmm. uh, on the preseason nfl football it's great mm-hmm. but I, I the reason i like that show is it gives you behind the scenes of what happens on preseason and stuff uh this this year it's with the oakland raiders but wow um you, you don't see um a quarterback or a head coach or any of the coaches for that matter without their playbook and that's the way that you need to start looking at your database is that is absolutely your playbook. Great point. Uh, you know, quarterbacks will all have their own system on how they want to uh, digest that information, relay that information to their teammates and how they're actually going to put it on themselves. So Matt's point is, you know, whatever your database style is, that's great, but right. embrace it. Okay. Um, you know, Tom Brady has a certain way that he likes to run his plays. There's a certain way that he likes to call his plays, and there's a certain way that he likes to write his plays down and communicate it with the coaches back and forth. 
that is going to be completely different than right. Patrick Mahomes on the way that he wants to digest the play. There's no wrong way of doing it as long as you're doing it. Absolutely. Period. What, great point. Absolutely great analogy. Daily. I have to. You have to feed that. You have to feed that database. Yeah. You, so, you know, we, you know, we talk about this all the time. Uh, you know, when somebody, people are doing this all day at work, right? They're on Zillow <laughs> and they're going like this, right? Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that you're not fooling anybody if you think you're the only person that's on Zillow at work. Oh, so it's everybody's so funny. on Zillow at work, right? Doing this. The way that you know that you've won as a real estate agent is somebody's doing this on Zillow and they walk up to you and they say, hey, Justin, this is what Zillow says my house is worth. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. That's how you know that you've won and you've delivered value before it comes to that point. That's so funny. Because what they're going to do is they're going to get that and they're going to say, yeah, I want somebody to contact me. They think they're getting the listing, whoever they think they're getting. They press the button and whenever they press the button, it goes into this big old yeah. fishbowl of business cards, right? <laughs> And and something and they're highest reaching bidder in. That's right. and and uh, <laughs> lost 172 million in the first quarter of 2018 and yeah uh, <laughs> Gozilla. so so and they're pulling the card out right and as they're pulling the card out that's who they're ending up with instead of doing that they have to know that, that where the value is that's right there's no need reaching into that into that bowl you can help them out with all of it which means you got to be that expert that, that Justin was talking about being prepared for that conversation about the market yeah it, I think that. If you don't believe that your clients aren't looking at Zillow, mm -hmm. uh, I think you're fooling yourself. So I have a funny, quick story because we got we got to wrap up here. But right. my brother is is trying to find a house, right. so he I'm helping him look at houses. I'm sending him different stuff, taking yeah. him to look at different stuff, and consistently, I would say almost on a weekly basis, biweekly basis, he will email me a link from Zillow. Oh yeah. And like I'm the one sitting behind the microphone here and I crack up when my brother sends me these Zillow links. I'm like, bro, get off Zillow. Stop. I got you. That was a house I sent you two weeks ago, but you just didn't look at it. That's right. So anyway, I just had to say that. Shout I, out to you, I bro. Absolutely. <laughs> love it. And that is such a, uh, that is a micro of what's, ha that's a macro of what's happening micro. Yeah. Or it's a micro of what's happening macro. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, so we have to make sure that we're delivering that value before it comes to. So you delivered a bunch of value to you. So he's gonna he's gonna use you on that. But there's a lot of other people that aren't that connected with with what's with what's going on. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, there's a you know there's a there's a ton of stories out there about people that you know ended up with the wrong agent. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, just because it's the one that they happen to grab out of the grab out of the fishbowl. So, so if you want to be that right person, you got to make sure you're staying in touch with your database. You got to make sure that they know that you're there and you're a resource long before you need it. And uh, and I'll throw a tidbit out there really quick. So, yeah, whatever area you're in, so uh, we'll talk about the area that we're in right now, right? Okay, so flood insurance is a big deal. Maps mm -hmm. are getting redone, mm -hmm. right? So uh, bigger waters or whatever they decide they're going to call it and all that kind of stuff. All of that is impacting things. If you live in this area and you don't have an idea about that, right, and, and what's going on, that's a problem. Go dig in. And start talking to the people you know about that. Right. Talk about opportunity zones if you deal with a lot of investors. Yeah. Talk about the changes with 1031 tax deferred exchange. Go figure that stuff out. Go talk to some experts and be ready to have that conversation. If you want your confidence to go up, if you want your sphere of influence to trust you, then dig into the things that are going on around you and quit being a, a person that just hands them data yeah. because they can already get that. You're being proactive as opposed to reactive. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, I, preparation's everything. And, yeah. and I, I can't, you got to study, you know, you got to grow, you got to understand all certain different aspects of the market. You got to understand yeah. 1031 exchanges. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying understand it on a, you know, accountants level or any of those types of things. I want you to be dangerous in all fields that can be near or around real estate or involving right. real estate transactions. Cause I don't want you, um, you know, I, I know plenty of realtors who have gotten in trouble where all of a sudden they put their general contractor hat on oh, yeah. when they're nowhere near what, what they oh, should yeah. be talking about. Do not talk outside of your boundaries. If you don't know what you're talking about, I'll find you the answer. That's exactly right. Have the expert, have a Rolodex. But be dangerous with what you know. Yeah, That's no, the value add absolutely. because the more more value you can add and the more you stay in touch with your people. And Completely um, right. we have a bunch of different ways that you can stay in touch with your people organically that doesn't feel abrasive, right. doesn't feel you know like your skin crawling. So right. we have that. But on a daily basis, you need to be growing and working on your network because if you're not, I promise you, there's somebody in your market that's doing it. One hundred percent. So, so I met with a I met with a, a husband and wife yesterday, a team that's that's contemplating coming on coming on board with us. And come over. 
uh, do the right thing. So, uh, so the uh, so in the conversation, you know, they talked about, you know, they said, well, we're we're not really comfortable. You know, we we geographically farm, but we're not really comfortable having a conversation with the people in the geographical in the geographical farm. And I said, so tell me a little bit about tell me a little bit about that. And they said, you know, they were coached to, you know, say I got a buyer in the area, whether they had a buyer in the area or not. <laughs> right? I said, okay. I said the reason why I said I like you better now, right? You you don't want to lie and you feel uncomfortable lying, and that's what you're telling me. I love that. Yeah. Okay. That's that's a plus. That's, that's a, a bad mentor tip. That's whoever exactly. gave whoever yeah, gave whatever right. mentor gave him that tip is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a black hat versus a white hat type <laughs> of thing, right? Yeah. Whenever it comes to cowboys and Indians, you know, you got you got to have the yeah. you got to have the white hat guys going. So. So I said, I said, so let me, let me ask you, you know, so we talked about where the, the neighborhood was that, that, uh, you know, that they, that they actively farm in. And I said, aren't some of those houses in a, in a flood zone? And they said, yeah, a decent amount of them are. And I said, so when's the last time you talked to the people in that neighborhood about the changes that are happening with, with the flood map? And, and I said, you know, if we were in California, we'd be talking about mudslide insurance. What a great right? value add. And I said, so, so, you know, have you go find, there's great information out there. Contact the, the county, talk yeah. to a friend that's an insurance person, talk, get somebody that knows what they're doing, get some information and mail it out. And then all you got to do, don't call up and say, do you want to buy and sell a house? I got somebody that's looking in your neighborhood. Yeah. Call up and say, Hey, there's some stuff going on with flood insurance. I'm in real estate. I, I want to be a resource for all of this. If you've got any questions about what I sent over, please, you know, please let me know. And the whole time, which I love this. The whole time they're scratching in their book. It's awesome. Yeah, you and, get. And those they're not are good doing peeps. the business, right? They're not doing the business. And I'm like, how has somebody not had this conversation with them? You how? don't know what you don't know. And I, I'll be honest in, in saying that I, I have been in real estate offices and brokerages where I didn't have the support, um, where I was, it was the blind leading the blind. Yeah. Um, you know, and I'm guilty of, of staying in a culture like that uh, for too long when I was starting sure. out in my career. But right. um, anyway, yeah, I mean, I, I can't stress having the right support team around you. I mean, when you're in real estate, you, you need to you need to look at investing in yourself, and that and that starts with with where you work. Right, I agree completely. Yeah. Cool. So All right, brother. we love it. So we we've had some uh, you know this old this old time and date stamp this a little bit, but there's there was some really tragic things that happened this week yeah. sh- with uh, with shootings. You know, of course, our thoughts and prayers go out to uh, go out to all of those people. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's a there, there's an opportunity to be political in this. We would both urge that you don't. Yeah. This is about caring about the, the victims and it's about caring about how to make this kind of stuff not happen again by us being responsible in our own neighborhoods. Right? Yeah. I love so, the people around you. I mean, it, the, right. too much hate is being spread right now. And I'm just tired of seeing the headlines with all the hate and all the toxic bullshit that's going yeah. around. You know, it's horrible. Grab your friend, grab your family member. You know, be thankful just to be breathing air right now. I mean, that's that's a gift in and of itself Absolutely. that we have just to be sitting here on this wonderful mm-hmm. Friday morning. But you know, really, we got to look at life through a different lens. Yeah, yeah. This, there's some bad people in this world, and there's some bad things happening in this world. But that doesn't mean that you have to be dragged down with it or be a part of it. That's right. Please just stay away from that crap. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, as always, Podcast Friday. We love it. We'll talk to you guys soon. Later.